All right, everybody, welcome to Virtual Career Tuesday. We were really excited today to, to host Federated Insurance. And as you can see, um, we've got some great people on the panel here. Um, Bob Butkus is the Senior Director Senior District Marketing Manager with Federated Insurance, and he's originally from Naugatuck. We're going to forgive him for being a Florida State University alum and not a UConn <laughs> alum, but that's okay. With all the basketball that's been going on lately, no one, we forgive no him for that. Perfect. Not everyone can be perfect. <laughs> and we're really excited to learn a little bit more about Federated Insurance. I got to say, anytime that you get to talk to a $10 billion company, it really opens your eyes up to the type of organizations that we're able to talk with. And, you know, Bob is from Connecticut, shares all the information about being part of Connecticut, but he's also going to talk to us about a company that the national headquarters are in Minnesota. So opportunities all around the country. So I'm going to give it a minute or two um, for Bob to just give a background and then he's going to share some information with us all about the, the materials. And then we're going to do our usual questions of, you know, what do you need to be to be a strong candidate? And what do you need to be to make yourself successful when it comes to interviewing and joining Federated Insurance? So, Bob, if you want to share your screen. Mm -hmm. um, we can yep. we could talk about that with, with the background of 15 years of success in this area. I'm excited to see what you're, you're able to share with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, Kathy. And um, I'm really excited to share a little bit about federated as I get going here, you know, I, I think the number one thing that I wanted to discuss is that, you know, I don't think many people as children growing up say they want to be an insurance professional when you grow up, right? I, I think that, you know, we think, hey, we want to be a firefighter. We want to be, you know, maybe a sport that we played or or something that we had a passion for. And you know, I think a lot of times insurance doesn't make it to the top of the list. Um, for me, you know, I grew up caddying um, since I was 12 at a, uh, the country club of Waterbury in Waterbury, Connecticut. And so when I went to college, um, I wanted to go and be in, in the golf course management world or the, the golf course world. And Florida State had a program. So that's why I chose Florida State. And, you know, I, I Getting into the hospitality world and, and doing golf would be a really fun career. And I, so my freshman year and my sophomore year, I did some internships at local country clubs, one in Stanford and one in Waterbury, back at the country club of Waterbury. And what I ended up finding was it was, it was a, a good job. Um, you know, I got to help people when they needed to get golf clubs and I got to watch sports center a lot. But after that, there really wasn't much purpose, right? And and there really wasn't much that I could do in the way of truly helping people. So I think that what ended up happening there, and, and it was kind of twofold, the other thing was ever since I was a, a young a boy and a young man, I'd always done jobs where I would work hard to make more than a minimum wage type of pay. So I had a paper route, I caddied, I refereed, I was a server, I valeted cars. None of these are directly sales roles, but everything said, if you put more effort in, you will get paid more. So here I was punching the clock, kind of standing around a country club, making my 10, 12, $15 an hour. And I really started thinking about my future and what that looked like. And so after my sophomore summer, I came back to Florida State and, and I switched majors to finance and mm -hmm. I ended up getting into the, going into the business school and um, talked to a bunch of professors and that junior year summer ended up interning in the life insurance world with New York Life up in Windsor, Connecticut, right off 91. They had an office at the time up there. And so I ended up finding that I really did have a passion for insurance. So really, what is insurance and how can you have a passion for it? I, I think that's a really important question to ask and to answer, right? And really insurance 
is being there for someone at their time of greatest need. You know, and uh, you can frame it in a lot of different ways. In the ways that Federated does it, we do business insurance. So, i.e., if someone's building burns to the ground, we, we had a client not too long ago down in Niantic on the shore, his garage with his six trucks was completely engulfed in flames. It was, it was a million dollar plus claim. And we have a, a 70 year old man who's in tears over this, where we are able to come in and rebuild him a garage and replace all his vehicles better than before, right? Make him whole and to make him satisfied and happy there. It can also be on the life insurance end. And we had a, a John Deere dealer in, in the Windsor Locks area who unfortunately lost the battle to cancer. And now we're on the other side of that, stepping in with life insurance and disability insurance to protect his five children who now no longer have a father, right? So it, it became very apparent to me uh, early on in my life, the significance and the purpose of what you do in the insurance world. Um, I feel like there's a lot of stigmas and mantras out there about insurance. You know, it's maybe it, it's boring or, you know, maybe an insurance agent is willing to tell you whatever you want to hear. And if there's a claim, they don't want to come through or maybe companies won't come through. These are, these are some things that I, I hear out there. And so as I was looking for a full-time opportunity my senior year, you know, I started thinking about all that and I wanted to find a company that really just provided a great training to me, great resources that supported me and allowed me to be a professional. And one of my finance, finance professors, um, Professor Randy, actually brought me over to the Federated booth at a career fair. And he said, hey, Bob, I think you'd be a really good fit for this organization. Uh, they've been around since 1904 at the time, I think seven or eight billion in assets. And the biggest thing um, that he bragged about really was, was two things. Number one, a nine month paid training program upon graduation. And number two, the tenure of the people that worked at the company. So it's gonna, they're gonna teach me how to have success. They're gonna hold my hand on to have success. And number two, once they do that, they're gonna support me in my career and be there. And you know, looking back at life, you look at decisions that we make and most day-to-day -day decisions are just that, but then there's some also paramount, very big, large decisions that we make. And upon commencement and upon choosing a career, I, I think it's a very large decision in one's life. And I've been with Federated now for 16 years and I count my blessings that I chose a company like Federated. Um, for the reasons you know meant that I just mentioned, and also for some other reasons. So I wanted to go through and over the next five or so minutes, share some of those. Now there's a lot of uh, slides here. You know I have this in a PDF format. I'm going to kind of bounce around. But the the biggest thing, uh, one of one of the reasons that I Federate is such a great company, is that we're mutually held. We're not publicly traded, and so what that means is our responsibility is to the shareholders and the policyholders. Every single person that buys from Federated has a vote. Now, if you decide to waive that vote, you, you waive that vote to a board of directors who votes on your behalf. But we are not responsible to shareholders and stockholders. We are not publicly traded. We're not selling stock to raise capital and we're not making decisions for Wall Street. We are making decisions for the people that buy our products. And so it allows us to retain surplus, having uh, the ability to pay claims and provide additional services. So um, in addition to providing superior coverage, you know, human resource questions might be asked. There was an employee got injured on the job. What is my legal right in the state of Connecticut to keep this employee, to modify their work, to terminate this employee, where do we stand there? Well, Federated as an organization has invested in human resource attorneys. They're a national network 
It's a third party that we pay for our clients to be able to answer those questions. As a mutual company, we want our clients to have resources like that and go above and beyond to be able to help them on the day to day. Um, one of the big things today is auto liability claims. If there's an accident and somebody is hurt, we're seeing large amounts of money paid out, often because of frivolous lawsuits where maybe that person wasn't injured, but they say they're injured. Federated is investing in telematics and dash cams to help our companies stay safe and to see the truth that happens. I don't have time today, but one of our large commercial vehicles in the last maybe six weeks was driving on a very busy road in downtown Philadelphia. And out of nowhere, someone just comes running across the street, looking at their iPhone and having earbuds in, right into the side of our truck, right into the left front quarter panel, bounces off gets up and, and, you know, is like laying there and then they, they're shaking up and they're okay. We had a video of the entire thing happening showing that this person was just running out into the street and didn't look and see our truck versus our truck hitting someone because our driver wasn't paying attention. So we're trying mm -hmm. to keep our folks safe each and every day and that's a benefit of a mutual company. Um, we're a national company so that was what was mentioned before. You know, I'm a Connecticut guy. I, I went to school elsewhere. I lived for a decade out of the state. But what I loved about Federated was I was hired. I moved to Minnesota for nine months. I lived in Atlanta, Georgia for three years. I came back up. I moved to Trumbull, Connecticut. And now I live in Southbury, Connecticut. We have national opportunities for anyone that's looking in the sales world, um, which I think is great. And if if you're in Connecticut and you want to move somewhere, we're more than willing to look at relocating you and we're more than willing to promote you during that process. That's actually how I got back to Connecticut. I was offered a promotion to come back home, which was really, really cool. So, hey, Bob, can I ask, does everybody, can I just ask one quick question? Does everybody do the training program in Minnesota? Yes. So how it works is if, if we have graduating seniors in May, um, we would look to hire them in either June or October. We have a, our next training program is June. The training program after that is October. One of the other things I didn't mention, we pay them $50,000. So we pay our new employee 50 grand to train. Mm -hmm. We also pay all the expenses to move and we have negotiated housing prices in, in Minnesota. We have corporate owned, corporately owned homes, or we have private residential homes that you can also rent. The average rent is like five to $800 per month. And you, you relocate up there in a training class, there's about 25 individuals. So again, there's three of those going per year. It's February, June, October, and it's a bunch of, um, highly motivated, highly engaged people that are wanting to learn about their future, learn about what insurance is. We start with a 101 basics, what is insurance? And then we teach the skills to apply that, which then molds right into sales skills. That's the first six months. And the last three months, we actually pay for our um, trainees to travel around the country and service our, our existing clients so let's say if someone was on maternity leave, or in, in my case, there was a gentleman who had cancer out in um, out in like Malibu, California, believe it or not. So I, I got to go out to Malibu for two months every other week, servicing the clients out there and, and helping those folks out. And then upon graduation of that, we would then move you back to a geographic area that you wanted to be in. You'd be given a team leader like me, there's 63, you know, of team leaders around the country, and they would work with you to take what you learn in the training program and apply it over the next two years. So it's a it's a three year onboarding process, and the mm -hmm. goal is that the goal is there. Upon graduation of the training program and successful implementation of the business plan over two years, that you become an independent, autonomous. Uh, career long 
sales representative in a true professional doing what you can do for the rest of your career. And that's why we have the longevity our, of our employees at Federer. So okay. that was a great Thank question. Thank, Thank you for asking that. Um, and one of the what about the test? Oh, yeah, yeah, the tests that the student that you would have to take. Yep. So upon graduation, um, once you graduate, we would then pay for the licensing. And what's required for licensing is a property and casualty exam and a life and health exam that you pass to get licensed in those, those two areas. So that's that's we pay for that. Mm -hmm. And the training that would any training that you would need to then successfully pass that as well. So another way that Federated is unique, we're a mutually held company. Um, we're a business insurance company, and we get our leads through national associations, uh, state associations, national buying groups, and state buying groups. So Lennox is a, a manufacturer brand for heating and air equipment. They exclusively recommend federated insurance to provide insurance for any Lennox authorized heating and air companies. So in the state of Connecticut, if there's a hundred companies that sell Lennox products, Lennox is saying federated insurance is the best insurance for you. We're asking that you take a look. In addition to that, federated um, insures energy related companies. So whether it's the gasoline world, petroleum world, or the solar world, anything that's privately held energy. So an electrical contractor that's doing plug, uh, the charging stations for Tesla's. For example, or um, a gas uh, a convenience store, we would ensure that the association that lobbies for those rights recommends federated insurance as the exclusive insurer for the business insurance for these businesses. Those leads are provided to each one of our reps, and each rep is given at a minimum a thousand leads when they start with federated that are warm leads. So you're not expected to cold call and generate leads out of no out of nothing. We actually provide those to you. And here's the types of businesses that you would be working in. So we insure auto dealers. So if you think about Hoffman Auto Group in the Hartford area or Valenti Auto Group, that's also in East Hartford, Wallingford, Watertown area, Bowles Auto Group in the western part of the state and into New York. These are very large auto dealer groups that can pay 250, 300, $400,000 a year for their insurance. And Federated is the company that insures that. We would insure the building. We would insure their auto inventory. We would insure their employees, um, any liability associated with the business, uh, any succession planning, estate planning, tax planning. You know, earlier today, we met with a company in New Britain. What an amazing story this is. First generation business, the business owners, I think is the business owner 63. Start, his dad was a barber and he decided to start a gasoline distribution company. So they, they wholesale gas around the state. And we get into just talking and protecting his business. And he just says, you know, I'm 63 years old and I don't really have a plan for the future. What, what do you think in terms of protecting my company is important? And then how can I pass this on to my son and my nephew? And we can help them, number one, protect his business, but number two, preserve the value of the company and move it on from one generation to the next. So it's a very incredible meeting. And we have a, a gentleman who today told us he was worth $20 million, okay? That's his net worth, asking us what we think, how we can help, what we can do to protect him. So it's a pretty unbelievable job when you start to think of things like that, about the audience that you have and the purpose that you have and what you do, how significant it truly is. So auto dealers, electrical contractors, we insure privately held grocery stores, um, Highland Park Market in Coventry is a client. So right down the road from Yukon, that grocery store, that is a federated insured 
business. Um, motorcycle dealers, printing associations, auto parts stores, so like a Napa, equipment dealers. I mentioned John Deere. There was a John Deere dealer in, in Windsor that unfortunately that gentleman passed away. We we insure the business and his life insurance. We had his we had his life insurance as well. Jewelry stores, petroleum, um, high risk contractors, building material dealers, funeral homes, machine shops, plumbing and heating contractors and tire associations. So we have a very targeted laser fo focused approach and we wanna be the very best in what we do in those businesses. And what we do is the property and casualty, the life and disability, um, annuities, and then other services that I mentioned like business succession and risk management. Our national headquarters is in Minnesota. And as a, the position that I'm looking to hire is marketing representative, and it's really an outside sales role. So you get hired, you graduate, you get hired by Federated, you're provided a $50,000 salary, full health benefits, relocation expense to Minnesota. In addition to all that, we have a match on our 401k and we offer a pension plan. And what we're looking to do as a marketing representative is actually face-to-face -face marketing. So you're not gonna be sitting behind a computer. You're not going to be in an office on a daily basis, you work remote, you set meetings from a home office environment daily, and on a daily basis, you're going out into the community, meeting both current clients and prospective uh, clients, you know, prospects for new business opportunities. So you, you are having them trust you having them believe in you, having them listen to your message of how we're unique and how we're different. We're a mutually held company that's a direct writer in specialized markets with services and coverage that are tailored to specific industries. In addition, we have association recommendations that nobody has in those industries. So we can provide coverages that they may not have, services that they may not be getting, and because we're mutually held and direct, it will all be at an equitable premium. And our goal is to keep those clients for the long haul. It's a, it's a sale that we wanna make. It's a relationship we wanna develop. We want our employees to be here for a career and we want our clients to be part of Federated for their career and their business. Um, we have a business plan that we focus on, I, I don't wanna get, you know, that's that's another conversation, but we have a track to run on that I would help any new employee um, implement and hold them accountable to upon graduation of the training program. We partner with third-party companies and resources. One of those is estate planning. And, you know, the skills that we're looking for, the skills that I'm looking for, the soft skills, hard work, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, from day one, I caddied, had a paper route, valet. This isn't a job where we're asking for 40 hours a week and that's it. We will ask for 50 to 60 hours a week. It's a big commitment. Now, the flip side of that, last year, our average first year marketing rep made $135,000. So in the first 12 months, you know, the, a gentleman, um, Bill Bladder, who is a UConn alum, made over, he made $205,000 his first 12 months in the field with Federated. That was a record that we had. So in, a, in addition to um, having purpose, having impact, having meaning in what you do, affecting people's lives in such a positive way when bad things happen to be there to help them and hold their hand, you are significantly rewarded on a financial side of that as well. With all that being said, it's a big, it's a commitment. We are asking for that person that we hire to be going all in on this opportunity. And that's moving to Minnesota, relocating back to an area that you wanna be in, 
and then putting the time in each and every day. We're looking for strong communication skills, a confident individual, someone who is good with organization, coachable, is competitive, and can build trust with people, who can get people to like them, trust them, and want to do business with them. Um, that's you know, go ahead, Kathy, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Well, one of the things that we talked about before the session started was, and you just touched on this a little bit, is impact, right? And the way you described it to me is the candidate's somebody that you remember meeting, right? And um, yep. part of what you were saying is, you're working with millionaire business owners mm -hmm. um, and being able to have an impact on their business and organization. But can you talk to me for just a moment or two about what you think in the interview process? How does somebody make that impact that makes them memorable to you? So that's such a great question. Number one, preparedness. So I, if I'm interviewing mm -hmm. with someone, I want them to have done some research on the company ahead of time. Um, Kind of think through the role to a degree. You may not understand it fully, but try to grasp the concept of the role. I know it's difficult, but review it, study it, try to understand exactly what it is. Have questions prepared. So if if you've done your research, what are some questions that come to mind that you can ask? In the interview itself, make sure that you're early. Kathy and I, for this 4 p.m. meeting, we're on at what? 345, 342, whatever it was that we got on and we discussed it and we, we prepared. You know, that that shows someone, if you promise someone you're gonna be there at one, you're there at one. So so as an interviewer, I'm looking for that. Um, you know, I reading the person that you're, you're uh, interviewing with or who you're selling to, right? So if I'm wearing a blazer and a, and a button down and you, you're there in athletic gear, the first time and we meet again, well, the next time I see you, I want to see you in a business suit and, and reading that and being understanding of that. And I get it that you may not understand that the first time you sit down, but just being aware of those things, um, leaning forward, smiling, firm handshake, eye contact. These are all things that I look for. And I'll leave you with the last thing. And it was one thing that you know, I was never really told, but it's, I think it's a good piece of advice. I love when I see a, a quick follow up after an interview. So once we end the interview, uh, the student says, you know, Bob or Mr. Buckus, thank you for meeting with me today. I really enjoyed it. Here's what I got out of it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I really appreciate your time and look forward to hearing from you as a next step. So, the, yeah, I think it's important what you just, what you just said is, the, the statement there about here's what I got out of it. Right? So really important that, you know, we tell the students, make sure that you're doing that follow up, but adding that statement, here's what I got out of it. That also makes the follow up memorable. That's right. Um, you mentioned that the series of uh, the interview process is a series of meetings over 2 to 3 months. So does it start with a phone and then a virtual other in person meetings? Can you talk about that for a 2nd? Yeah, that's that's exactly it. The first one would be a phone call. I would just briefly explain federated like I'm doing now. Um, trying to have that candidate understand if they think it's right for them. The next step is then a personality profile. So we have a personality profile that we ask them to take. It, it matches it, um, the characteristics of them for successful reps within our organization. If they pass that, then we'll sit down in person and go through a more in-depth, detailed description of the opportunity. If they, if I'm liking what I'm seeing out of the candidate and the candidate likes what they hear about the opportunity, the next step is then for them to actually go in, in the vehicle with a sales rep for a day. And they get to see a day in the life of a sales rep. They really get to understand inside and out what it's all about, what they do, the people that we sell to, the people that are selling for us, do they see themselves as part of this culture? Do they feel they're gonna be a good fit? Um, and then within that, then I would you know, do subsequent interviews to follow up and answer any further questions that we had. Upon passing my phase of the interview, they would then fly an interview with my boss, 
And if he passed them, they meet with his boss. So after they, after we go through a series of interviews at my level, my boss, who's in charge of the New England region, would meet that person. And if he approves him or her, that candidate then goes and meets with a gentleman that's in charge of half of the country. So it's a very, you know, in-depth, intense process. Again, the goal is longevity, a career focus. We want to answer any and every question the candidate has, and we want to vet the candidate as best as we can. And when that match works, it's a match that usually works for a career. And that's our mm -hmm. goal is to take someone who graduates college, who's a year or two out, and hopefully have them retire with Federated a millionaire. And I don't think there's many companies today that still have that approach, but that is our mm -hmm. goal when hiring someone. Well, one thing that's good about this is, well, it's a really extensive process, right? So this is an all in commitment to interview with the company. It mm -hmm. also sounds to me like by the end of that interview process, the candidates already also been able to see the flip side of that, right? They've met with quite a few people at the company. It's not a, we talked on the phone, we had an hour interview, make your decision. It sounds like there's really a knowledge base there where the interviewer has a good idea of what the company is like. That's correct. My senior year, I remember I had maybe 10 companies that I, I had a, applied to interview with. Federated was the first, mm -hmm. and there was a bunch of other financial and insurance related companies and by far mm -hmm. the most in-depth process, but also there's so much coming at you. It's like drinking through a fire hose your senior year and trying to decipher and understand all the opportunities that are truly in front of you. And through the process, that's our goal is to give as much clarity as we possibly can so that when that person does come and work with us, there's no surprise. They know exactly mm -hmm. what it is. And I, I wish I wish Bill. I wish Bill could be on because, you know, as he went through it, I think Bill is 27 right now. So he went through the process four years ago or so. And he even told me, he said, mm -hmm. you know, you really undersold the training program, you know, depending on how, how much I can really truly explain that. But it's 25 professionals coming together all around the country in a learning environment. That's an incredible learning environment. And you're learning off each other. You're learning the culture of the company. You're learning insurance and it's just a very positive support group to the point where to 16 years later, I've been to every one of my trainees weddings. We talk and text all the time. You know, I mean, the social media thing I'm okay with, but we're on a, a text chain and we, we still are very intimately involved in each other's lives. And I, I met those people in my training class. So it's just a great, mm -hmm great group and great culture and it's nice to have all those folks uh, be part of your life so i want to make sure that i'm mindful of your time um and i don't want to call anybody out but sam if there's any questions that you want to ask you can either put it in the chat or you can ask it you can raise your hand and ask it while you're thinking um and again i don't want to put you on the spot but bob one other question so linkedin how much do you use linkedin when you're looking at candidates it's a big part of what I do. Um, you know, okay. I would, I preferably, I would like a face to face introduction through a venue like this or a professor. That's how I was brought to federated through a career fair. But in, in today's day and age, a lot of it is done also through LinkedIn as an initial meeting uh, set. And then, you know, then we'll talk on the phone and meet in person from there. Okay. So and how do you feel? Oh, how do you feel about students? If you want to share your email, if there are any students on here who would want to reach out to you through, would you prefer like LinkedIn or through email if they're interested in the role? We can email would be preferable. LinkedIn works okay. as well. And I also have my cell phone included on um, the document that I had shared with you, Kathy, that you showed me earlier. It's at the bottom. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to actually, if you don't mind, can you just put your, your email in the chat? Can you do that? Yeah. 
just make sure that we have that. Okay, we're um, Olivia or Saif. Did you have any questions that you wanted to ask or any of the team? Oh, go ahead, Sam. Hi. So, um, yeah, I just had one question. Um, you know, you mentioned a lot about the the training process. Um, what I I guess my my question is what post training uh, as a new employee. How do you guys like what opportunities do you then give to your uh, your employees? Yeah, so the training program is for the marketing representative position. That's the position that I'm I'm hiring for. So it's a nine month sales based in classroom plus servicing clients program. Upon graduation of the training program, then there's a two year onboarding process where now you're live and you're selling for federated insurance on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know I skipped over it. Um, I believe I'm still sharing my screen here. Upon, upon graduation of the, the formal training program, I will then hold each new representative accountable to the federated insurance business plan, which is an activity-based plan that will yield results. So. It starts with uh, looking at your overall opportunity in terms of leads. And then these bars here are activity for new business. And the fifth one up, the major client service standards is our servicing standards to our clients. So then I will help the new representative implement a top 100 new business opportunities, 24 new life insurance opportunities, six attorney visit opportunities. And how are we gonna service our clients and then hold them accountable to that by a show and tell method. When you need support, I will show you how to do it. When you feel confident to do it on your own, you do it. And then let's break that down together and let's analyze that. Let's continue to improve and get better. And that's a two year process. There's a lot, that's a great okay, question. Sam, yeah. make sure you write down Bob's email that he put in the chat. Great question. And I know we have a hard stop for you, Bob, at 440. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time to do this. For all of the students that are watching this at a later point in time, make sure that you're paying attention to LinkedIn. You know, there are all of the tips that you were given here. And what we heard in the presentation is it's it's a community, right? So this isn't just a marketing representative job. It's a job that you're looking to join the company, join the family and be part of the organization long term. So thank you everybody for joining us, Bob. Again, I thank you for your time and we look forward to having you back again for another event. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you everyone for your time today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm gonna stop recording. Any follow-ups.